Hello and welcome back to Talking Europe. I'm at the European Parliament where a committee of MEPs has just voted to sue the European Commission for unfreezing billions of euros in funding for Hungary late last year. They say it's time to protect European taxpayers' money from misuse. Meanwhile, Warsaw and the European Commission have unveiled an action plan which involves legal reforms in Poland and ending the EU's infringement procedures against the country, which date back to the previous Conservative government. Well, I'm joined by two MEPs with very different approaches to the issue of the rule of law. Katalin Che is a, Hungarian, is a Hungarian politician and vice chair of the Renew Europe group here, and she says that the challenge of her generation is to turn democratic backsliding around and to fight for a European Hungary. Welcome to you. Thank you. I'm also very pleased to welcome Dominik Tarczynski, a Polish politician. He's a member of the Bureau of the European Conservatives and Reformists, and he believes in a Europe of sovereign nations which are treated with respect. Uh, welcome to you as well. Thank you for having me. So let's start with all the turbulent events in Poland over the last uh, couple of months. And uh, Katarin Cze, I, I, I imagine you're quite pleased that Poland is now more closer to your type of politics. Well, I am not a Polish citizen, uh, but from what I gather is that indeed the Polish citizens chose a different path for their country, a path where women's rights are more respected, where the uh, European identity is uh, felt more closely, when European rules uh, are adhered to because of uh, the joint advancement of this community. That was the choice of the Polish people, and I'm really hoping that Hungarian people will choose the same path very shortly. Uh, Dominik Tarczynski, uh you obviously don't take the same view on <laughs> what's happening in Poland. Well, first of all, very, very basic fact. We have won. Law and justice won election in Poland. We are the first party in the free Poland since, I would say, uh, 70 years, not including war times. The coalition, the opposition coalition had a bigger share. Overall. That is correct, but yeah. very important, it's worth to notice that we are the first in the recent history of Poland to win three times in a row. We have won on the way, we have won European elections, presidential elections, we have won again this time. But Donald Tusk was able to create and build the coalition against winning party. That's very important for our viewers. So um, he, he managed to build this coalition. He was building his coalition on love language good relations with, uh, with EU, being um, able to get money from EU to do whatever Brussels expect him to do. Well, now we are waiting for the fruits of his politics. <laughs> well, maybe to, to do what his civic platform uh, program said he was going to do, well, no? you like see, all civic, the legal changes platform, and all of that. Very important to mm. let our viewers know, civic platform was second in, in our elections and other four parties voted against Donald Tusk and against law and justice. These people who are in a coalition with Donald Tusk did not vote for him. And I do well, speak. They, they do have a coalition agreement, though. So well, coalition mm. agreement is between the political leaders, but not the voters. That's very important. So the mo most of the nation did not vote for this government. That did not vote for Donald Tusk. He's trying to present himself as Alexander the Great, who has won with, with the law and justice. <laughs> you lost, Donald Tusk. But isn't this like a little bit of an interesting take on elections? Because usually governments are formed based on majorities, and if the majority of uh, the voters who coalesce behind parties that share similar agendas, similar enough for a coalition I do agreement, agree. I then do. I think that is a perfectly fine and legitimate way to move forward. I so do agree. I do agree that it's with. always based on on coalition, but when you see the clashes between the left and Donald Tusk at the moment, it's been only three months. After three months, they have official clashes on a Twitter, fighting and calling themselves well, names. That, that's, so it's not going to last. It's not going to last. Yeah. It's not going to last for years. I can take a bet, uh, Catalina. You ready to take a bet? Absolutely. No, you're not. Sorry. No, I am. So, Please, so, let's take yeah, a bet. Are you? Of course. Are you? Yeah. So there is a bet for Belgian chocolates that this government will not last for years. Are you ready? But, I'm totally up for but, that. But, but, Dominic, you know that I bet chocolate, chocolate, Belgian chocolate. But the latest opinion polls are still pretty good for. Yeah. 
civic platform, actually. Well, for civic platform, but not for the coalition. That is the difference. Anyways, okay, they're okay. making... Let, no, important thing... You haven't bet they any money. No, 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 no. We I, bet, I, bet I'm perfectly chocolate. happy to bet Belgian chocolates, and I'm that, also that, happy to fine, add but, that... But import, important thing is that he took responsibility for what is going on in Poland and eastern part, central eastern part of Europe. We are talking about Ukraine. He took responsibility for, for what, is going to, what is going to happen in our relations with Ukraine and with Russia. This is, this is the real threat. Yeah. There's no jokes about it. So mm. our approach was completely different. His approach is completely different. Mm -hmm. OK, let, let's come on, because we haven't talked much about Hungary, Katalin Chair. Uh, what about this move to um, take a, a stronger stance on uh, the rule of law uh, and this move in the European Parliament I mentioned in the introduction? Mm -hmm. um, you've said that Europe is, a t is at a turning point on the rule of law, both in terms of upholding standards in the EU and in the candidate countries for mm. enlargement? Uh, well, I, I absolutely think this uh, regulation, uh, what we have that is called the rule of law conditionality, is an absolute landmark legislation uh, for the future of the European Union. Uh, it has to be a very credible barrier against democratic backsliding, against corruption. And the, the European Commission should only disburse money at the point when every single condition is complied with. This is clearly not the case with Hungary. And this is really pushing the entire European community into a dangerous discussion. And you're, you're very right in uh, bringing Ukraine into the discussion, for instance, because we are really at a historic moment when uh, democracies clash with autocracies. And we need to be a strong democracy within the EU so that we can work together with other democratic partners. So you're talking about the level of corruption in Ukraine? I'm uh, talking about gotcha. the, le the level of corruption in Hungary. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, so why, why then European money went to, uh, to Bulgaria when EPP ma uh, man of, of honor mm -hmm. was the prime minister with the highest level of corruption? And there was no problem at all. Then Poland is the lowest, when mm -hmm. it's the lowest official data from, uh, from Eurostat. Yeah. And we, we've been called corrupted country um, when we have the lowest level of corruption. I'm not That's sure, official data. Uh, who uh, called Poland a corrupted country. And uh, left I'm politicians from the left side and liberals. This I, is what we I'm can aware, hear in the chamber. Uh, the rule of law conditionality mechanism is not applied uh, against Poland. It is only applied against the Hungarian government. But as we have this law in place, if you have a report about other countries, Bulgaria, for instance, I'm hopeful that the commission will uh, look into it. It's in entirety because and that's that why we have this law the problem. to that save is our the European pro money. That is the problem, that the whole rule of law thing is used as a political tool if Orban is not obedient, if Kaczynski is not obedient, let's use the rule well, of law. Ex Dominic, Bulgaria, sorry, no, 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 not important. But can I just jump this in? Is you say it's political, but it was the European Court of Justice and the European yeah. Court of Human Rights judges who decided to take those proceedings against the previous you, Polish are government. You talking about, are you talking about the corruption scandal? No, and no, 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 I'm, you, no, no I'm just talking about infringement procedures that were decided by the ECJ and the ECHR against Poland in the last in few the years. At the same time, we could hear the judges having a, a being a part of, of the hunting with the lobbyists and no one cares. Are you talking about those judges? Be serious. I mean, when we hear about the biggest corruption scandals like Cattergate, then, then judges having, a, having a, a hunting run with the lobbyists and no one cares, nothing's happening. The credibility. We're, we're, mix, is we're going mixing down. a lot of things is, in the you, same You know what is even same worse basket, than yeah. that? Uh, when a prime minister's son-in-law or their friend, who is a former gospeler, becoming the richest man of a European country based on European taxpayers' money, is a donation that was supposed to go elsewhere. This is the problem in Hungary. Who proved that? Who can prove that? So, if for you're going to prove that, if you're going to prove that, go to court. So. Uh, are you but okay? then, then the judge will be just back from his hunting are you, run. I are don't know you if okay he's going to be the available. Analysis well, I, of Olaf, for instance. No, what I'm saying, what, what I'm saying is that this Olaf, temple, the EU anti-corruption yeah, watchdog, the EU anti-corruption watchdog. Sir, what, I'm tr what I'm trying to say is, this temple of democracy is full of hypocrisy. That is the problem. <laughs> the problem is that the majority of left and liberals trying to politically fight with the conservatives using rule of law, judiciary, 
and this beautiful idea of perfect world which does not exist, especially when you see judges having a hunting run yeah, with but, lobbyists and but, top but judges. I'm Dominic, not talking sorry, about but the judges. The hunting run doesn't apply to every single decision that ECHR and ECJ not. judges have but ever made. It's you who brought this. Uh, this, uh, this I judges know, but you're using and, one um, hunting story to, it's, to, it's, to, to apply to everything well, that, the, that the judges have ever done. This hunting story is the <laughs> biggest scandal in the history of this of this court. That's number one. The same thing with the Carter Gate. The, the the biggest corruption scandal where resolutions were uh, basically bought to attack or 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 make a great PR to, to the others. Get, you can buy Okay. Is what is is individual individuals behaving? No, it's in not a, individuals in a, behaving. Well, it's indi that individual was the MEPs. president of the of the parliament. Individual MEPs. What are you talking about? Well, Qatar the Gate vice, is absolutely a very serious matter. I agree with you, but this is why this house has has pushed for and has to continue pushing for more stricter accountability reforms and more stricter scrutiny. We have done that. We have started it. We have to do it with ourselves, just as well with other member states who steal European and those who have left, political and, and money those, for and, their own purposes. And those who were who, who are under the threat of the jail just left the jail. I'm, I'm talking about Qatar gay stars, and they're in the plenary just now as we talk. That's what it is. But uh, ladies I don't and gentlemen. think that there is a debate about uh, the problems and the trouble the entire no, country scandal pushed the, our European institutions. When you're okay. trying to when, just look, one okay. more sentence, when yeah. you're trying to point your finger at someone about the corruption, look at the plenaries like 20, 20 meters from here. But this does not exclude to step up against oligarchs who use European taxpayers' money to make their family rich. J just then you have to prove it. Just then you have to go to the court. Final then you point. Have to, you know, you can't just come to the studio and say he's corrupted. We have people who are arrested, no. not only gossips. There is a European court judgment that this mechanism can be applied against Do you want Hungary. me to go back to the judges? Come on. Okay. Okay. Let's <laughs> stop there. <laughs> Let's end it there. We've run out of time. But to be continued, I think. Thank you so much Thank to you very much. Katalin Che and to Dominic Tarczynski. That's all for this edition of Talking Europe. Thank you. Thank you.